I'm calling this next painting The Highwayman because it's inspired by the poem The Highwayman. I've begun with drawing around my beaker here for the moon and then I've drawn here the gable end of a house, a little pathway. Let's, let's finish the house off. Let's take it down a little here. Copy that angle there. And this can be the little house. I made a pathway here. And now I'm going to paint around the moon. I'm using a mixture of Payne's grey and some a little bit of red in here, there's some blue in here, it's a mixture of colours. Now, I find it easier when I'm trying to go around something so perfectly circular as this moon to turn my board as I go. Although, if you do make a little mistake, don't worry about that because I think I'm thinking of having some clouds over this moon. So we don't need to worry too much about the actual edge of the moon. But I haven't made my mind up yet. So we'll see as the painting evolves. And this is what I really enjoy about art, about painting. We'll just see. Carrying on now with the dark sky. And if you find that there are a few little white shapes left, they could represent stars in the sky, perhaps. Just using the flat side of the brush here. And sort of almost just blending the paint onto the paper like butter on toast just spreading it gently I've got a shooting star here leaving that quite like that I have some blue here I might just add a little bit of blue as well to the top edge of the hills here not going onto the house, not yet. The moon was a ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas, the road a ribbon of moonlight, when the highwayman came riding, riding over the purple moor, when the highwayman came riding over the purple moor. So the sky is nearly complete and I've made my decision I will be putting a few clouds blowing across the surface of the moon. Are we ready? So I'm taking a little Payne's Grey on my brush here and just using the very tip of the brush wiping a few linear clouds across the surface of the moon. Doesn't take too many and I might even soften a few off with some clean water on my brush. So that's a little bit of water just softening the clouds away a little bit.
as the moon is often covered with beautiful cloud. I have to be careful that I don't overdo it. I'm, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying, but I don't want to lose the brilliance of the moon. Right, let's get some purple more, shall we? Made here some blue and red. I began with blue furs and added some red to it. And we should get a purplish sort of shade. For the purple more. And I'm leaving a small amount of moonlight on the pathway. Just a small amount of shadow, purple and Payne's grey on this side of the house, or the inn. And maybe a little on the rooftop. But I want to leave some white as well because the white is representing the moonlight. It's particularly shining this way, creating a bright, very bright area here. Perhaps we need a little window. I'm just using pencil now. There's a little window here. This is a soft 2B pencil. Maybe there's the suggestion of a small chimney pot here on the roof. I like the way that you can just introduce a little bit of pencil here and there. Well, we've certainly got the sensation of moonlight. Of course, you can see that my painting is drying. It's drying from the outer edges. And you can see here, it's a lot lighter. I like that. And I'm thinking that I might call this finished. I'd like it to dry for a few more moments before I take the tape off. So, if you don't mind, I think I'm going to introduce a different painting. And now I wasn't necessarily planning on doing this, but I'll see if I've got a small piece of paper here ready. Yeah, that will do. It's much smaller. And it's just going to be, it's just going to be It's just going to be some trees. I've got some green here. Let's introduce some. Shall we have maybe some water first? A little bit of cobalt blue there. Maybe some maybe some green hills, perhaps. No drawing on this. I've just gone straight on with my paintbrush. Here, I'm going to introduce some evergreen pine trees. Now you can paint a tree in this way, which is there's the tree trunk and 
I'm using a mixture of Payne's Grey and yellow. I call this a smiley tree for obvious reasons. I'm making these marks rather like a smile. They go smaller as they get to the very top of the tree. Should we let them blend here a little bit? It's just a little bit of fun creating some trees. Smiley tree. Quite broad up the base, getting narrower and narrower and narrower and finer as it reaches the very top of the tree. Might as well put one here. It's my painting. I can create it however I wish. And I think I'm just going to leave the sky white because it really helps to define the trees. I've got an idea as well. What about having a little bit of the trees reflected in the water? So these trees may reflect a little bit, but they're not perfect. It's not a it's not a mirror image. It's just the suggestion of the shapes and the color of the trees. So that's it's a good tip, really. The water is moving and it's creating ripples and reflections on the surface of the water. I just had to stand up then just to check how it how it was looking and it's looking quite good. Shall we have a look at the moonlit one? It's still drying. I like it though. I quite like this darker area here. I'm going to read a little poem and it relates to these trees and it's called Evergreen. Gently sways the evergreen pine beneath my window, beneath the sky. Tendril-like pointed fingers curve on boughs, stretch growing upwards. From its base, planted softly down the years, the evergreen tree grows, narrowing as it reaches its furthest point, there to rest there to bud once more. Ancient evergreen, how are you so sturdy within your soiled roots, yet young and fragile at your uppermost tip, where you stand alone and still survive? My furthest point now reached, I too am strong. I too have knowledge and wisdom passed on to me through the slowly growing years of time. Gently sways, the evergreen pine. Here's a painting that I created of the evergreen pines. Let's go back now and complete our moonlit painting. And simply I'm going to remove the tape and let's have a look at the finished thing. It won't be until a few more hours 
that this painting will be at its best. Sometimes even overnight, 24 hours, when you awake in the morning and you look at your painting and you see that it's dry and it's absorbed completely into the paper. Wow, yeah, I'm, I do, I'm qu quite pleased with this. Try some of these tips yourself and uh, see if you can create the effect of the moon with the clouds, the ghostly galleon tossed upon cloudy seas. Happy painting!